ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin. This is my co-host, Teddy. And you're probably thinking, wow, Kevin, another video so soon? I thought you were slowing down a little bit. Well, I am because of my focus on my new channel, if you don't know, History Lounge. Uh, that's kind of going to be my main focus now somewhat. I'm kind of going to balance between the two channels, but I'm working on a video for that. I'm also working on my next Hardware Legends episode for this channel. And it's about Intel's Sandy Bridge CPUs, which definitely ties in well today with today's video. So I don't even know. I guess we just got to dive straight into it. It's looking like Intel. I'll just I'll just read the title for you guys. Here we go. Intel CPU 2018 to 2021 roadmap leaks out. Up to 10 core Comet Lake S desktop CPUs in 2020, 14 nanometer Rocket Lake S in 2021, no 10 nanometer LGA parts till 2022. Oh my goodness. Intel, what are you doing? Now you guys need to keep in mind that this is a leaked roadmap. So take it with a grain of salt. And I'm reading this from a WCCF Tech article, although it has been widely reported. Uh, it's always hard to tell with roadmaps if it's like new or if it's old. Uh, in this case, I, I would think it's new because of the fact that there's a CPU on here that I've never heard, a code name I've never heard before, uh, that's never shown up before. So that leads me to believe that it's a newer one because when I made my video sort of discussing Intel 10 nanometer not that long ago, I did a lot of research around this because I was confused. I knew that you guys might be probably pretty confused as well. So I want to try to clear it up. I'm sure even like half the people at Intel are confused at this point. So uh, I just wanted to do something, make a video to clear it up. So let's read the article, the first part of it anyway. Starting off with the desktop side of things, we are looking at the S series and the Xeon E series family. The S series lineup is based around the socket H, so that's LGA 1155 or 1156, and has various 35 watt, 65 watt, 95 watt SKUs. That's what we're usually seeing on the desktop lineup. The lineup is currently made up of the 14 nanometer uh, plus plus. <laughs> I keep I keep wanting to go plus 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 plus. That's what it'll end up eventually at this rate. Based coffee like S. Uh, refresh parts which fall under the ninth generation banner so this is like you know I mean you guys know what coffee like refresh is we, we really don't need to keep going on about that at this point so when you look at the roadmap you'll notice that on the desktop side of things there's gonna be no 10 nanometer CPUs coming out until 2022 or later 2022 they're gonna be on 14 nanometer for that long there's only so much you can optimize at this point this skylake architecture must be at its absolute limit so we have the coffee lake refresh so this will be uh this stuff will we will be hearing more about at computex surely comet lake h which is going to go up to 10 cores that's so looking like that'll be at the uh start of next year or midway through next year and then Rocket Lake, which is one I've never heard of before, Rocket Lake. And that's going to be uh, coming out in 2021, it looks like. And that will still be on 14 nanometer Rocket Lake. There's also uh, uh, on the mobile side, the U-series. So the mobile side's a bit different. It's looking like they will go to 10 nanometer on the mobile side of things. That will happen this year with Ice Lake, but it's going to be in limited quantities. And it'll still, I would imagine, on the mobile side, it'll still be 14 nanometer for quite a while until it's looking like they go to uh, Tiger Lake. And that's looking like it'll be the main 10 nanometer chip uh, for Intel on the mobile side of things. And that's looking like it's happening there. The article goes on to read, Intel's Lakefield SOCs using the fervorous multi-die packaging technology is expected to hit rate hit retail stores around mid-2019 and will be based on a mix of 10 nanometer and 14 nanometer IPs. There's also Ice Lake Y two-core SKUs 10 nanometer planned for Q2 2019, marked as limited, while its successor Tiger Lake Y 
10 nanometer with four core options has no such markings. It looks like Intel's 10 nanometer yields would get better by mid 2020 so they can offer more mainstream products to the mass market. Intel would also simultaneously be offering up to four core 14 nanometer Comet Lake Y parts around Q3 2019, so they'll have both 14 nanometer and 10 nanometer Y series products available around the same time. Okay, so there's a lot to take in for this, from this, and it's it's still a bit confusing, as with most roadmaps are. Basically, the short of it is, if we're basing it off this information, it's looking like Intel, as they have been for so long now, are going to be stuck on 14 nanometer. Let's, let's just not worry about the mobile side of things. Most of you guys are desktop gamers. You're enthusiasts. We'll just focus on the desktop stuff. It's looking like they're going to be on 14 nanometer until 2022. This is going to be a really, really big problem for Intel because by 2022, AMD will be on like 7 nanometer plus or even maybe sub 7 nanometer by that time. I mean, what are they thinking? They're so asleep at the wheel, it's almost unbelievable at this point. Especially with me making my video on Sandy Bridge right now with Hardware Legends. It's stunning to see Intel's innovation up to the point of Sandy Bridge. And they were very good at that. They, they The innovation was very good, especially Sandy Bridge. That was a huge step for Intel. Very, very good job with that. But then after it, it just has sort of tapered off. You know, the progression has just slowly tapered off until the point now where you've got this. Even if they go up to 10 cores uh, with their 14 nanometer, plus, 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 plus. That's not going to be enough. If AMD is going to bring out with Ryzen 3000 up to 16 core uh, desktop CPUs on 7 nanometer, there's just no way Intel's going to be able to compete. Now, if you're an AMD, a big AMD fan, you will be probably pretty happy saying like, yeah, look, you know, Intel's finally getting what they deserve. And I would say I, I do understand that feeling. I truly do. But I worry about a future in which things go too far the other way. A future in which AMD is so far ahead of Intel that they start doing a lot of what Intel has been doing for the last few years and don't think they wouldn't. Of course they would. If you start having a monopoly on the market, as they might if they get this far ahead of Intel on the desktop market anyway, they might do the same thing. They'll start jacking up prices because they know, well, who's going to buy Intel now? We've got all the best CPUs. Why would anyone even buy an Intel CPU at that point? You know, we're so far ahead. What We can charge whatever we like. And that is what could happen. You always want the competition. You always want the balance. You never want it tipped one way or the other. That being said, Intel still has a fairly good grasp on certain things. Um, there's still a lot of like pre-built systems, especially by companies like you know Dell, for example, uh, or any of those types of computers are mostly all use Intel CPUs. I imagine that will start to change over the next few years as well. But this is just really bad news for Intel. Um, it's also going to start impacting them in the enthusiast market as well and the HEDT stuff. That's real. I mean, as if they haven't already been having huge problems in that area uh, compared to Threadripper. I think this would just exacerbate it even more. So yeah, it's this definitely isn't looking good. Um, and to say... <sighs> I don't even know if I'm like disappointed at this time because this mean it's not like I was I th from the information I had I thought that the I knew that this year they would be bringing out 10 nanometer but I uh, knew it would be on the mobile side only that was the information we were working with beforehand uh, now and with the idea that next year would be the 10 nanometer around Computex time, next year, Q2 2020, we would be seeing 10 nanometer uh, CPUs, ice like CPUs on the desktop uh, running the uh, Sunny Cove cores. 
So that's what we all assume will be happening uh, next year. But if it's going to be, look, like two years, more than that, to get to 10 nanometer, AMD's going to be so far ahead at that point. Uh, yeah, Rocket League, that's a new one. But it's still going to be 14 nanometer. And that's going to be the one that looks like it's going to be taking them through 2021. A 14 nanometer CPU in 2021 as Intel's main desktop CPUs. Yep. So if you guys are not aware, 14 nanometer came out in 2015 for Intel. It's a long time ago. So that means they will be sitting on the 14 nanometer process for at least six years. Six years on 14 nanometer. Think of where AMD's been in that time. They've gone from 14 to 12, and then they'll be going to seven within three generations, more or less three years. So in three years, AMD's gone from 14 to seven, and it's taking Intel more than six, most likely six and a half to seven years to go from 14 to 10. I know the way the architectures work and the uh, fabrication process is different. I'm well aware of that. I covered that in the previous video. But th just it's just ridiculous at this point. And uh, yeah, anyways, I'm rambling too much. It's just I, I don't even know what to say at this point. So you guys say it for me in the comment section down below. Let me know your thoughts. I always like to know. I always read your comments. So let me know. I thank you all for watching this video and I'll see you all next time.